Next up, we have uh, the Chief Marketing Officer of Agency MRY, David Berkowitz, and Chris Hansen, now the Chief Executive of Hansen News LLC, formerly of NBC's Dateline, talking about journalism and digital. Why don't you have a seat right over there? <laughs> Dreading that. <laughs> you knew it was coming. Yeah. Well, um, I'm of the age where uh, my first exposure to computers was before I knew what the word uh, internet meant. Uh, at uh, Michigan State University, we had to take a computer class, and uh, we had to learn a language called Fortran. And I could not ever conceive how this would help me to be a journalist at any time. Suddenly, we're uh, using Twitter and Facebook and Reddit and everything else, and, and, and now, you know, obviously the goal has been to, how do we get the word out about our product? How do we use these, these uh, digital uh, platforms? And, and how do we make money from it, quite honestly? And, and David uh, clearly works in that space on a daily basis and helps companies and entities do that all the time. Uh, yeah, and what got me into this whole space was to figure out how to make a living writing and not become a journalist. Because yeah, uh, by the time I graduated school, it was already, I, I didn't want to write obituaries for a local paper for five years. And I, I didn't have that passion for uh, uh, just climbing that ladder. But creating content was really appealing. And, it was, and it's also very funny when you start doing something earlier on that like, content marketing was not a thing then. Right? I mean, there wasn't the word for it back uh, 15 years ago. Uh, but it was the whole end all be all of what I wanted to do. And, and now, all of a sudden, it's trendy to say that. But it's not like there was any grand vision going into it. You know, it was interesting. Um, you know, we obviously are trying to consistently reach, uh, you know, the younger demographic. And uh, we were able to do that with uh, To Get Your Predator uh, because, to be quite honest, it was, it was compelling to college kids who came up with a drinking game where every time I said, I'm Chris Hansen, they'd take a shot of a beer or, or schnapps or fireball or whatever it was. But the lesson of reaching that demographic is that while they may have not uh, have started to watch To Catch a Predator for altruistic, journalistic uh, reasons, they will follow us, me, into whatever else we're doing. And, and to reach them, um, you know, you really have to be creative and not really be a poser online. You can't just go on Twitter and say, uh, tomorrow night at 8 uh, Eastern, we're going to be doing a story uh, where we go undercover on Craigslist and Backpage and expose everything from hitmen to people selling human organs. You have to kind of be a real guy. And w what hit home to me was, uh, the younger, smarter guys at NBC who handle the, the digital world said, you know, would you do Reddit? Would you do it AMA? Ask me anything. And, and uh, the president had just done one. I said, well, if it's good enough for President Obama, it can certainly, certainly good enough for me. And we get on the thing, and the questions are, are very uh, focused, uh, smart people. And, and about 15 minutes into it, I get a text from my son, who's a sophomore at Michigan State University, and says, hey, are you on Reddit right now? And I said, well, how did you know? He said, I've gotten 15 texts from my friends who have caught this. And it you know, dawned on me at that time, hey, you know, we're on to something here in terms of reaching this, this very you know, difficult to reach demographic. Well, well and you have this personal brand that's, that's been part of the Dateline brand for a long time. At what point did it click for you that there was value in having that direct connection to your viewers and audience? Well, pretty early on, you know, when, when I first came up with the idea to do To Catch a Predator and to, to, to try and expose this, I mean, had I gone to my bosses and said, listen, we know that uh, predators online are a serious problem. Uh, I have some anecdotal uh, cases where kids have been hurt. We have uh, interviews with parents uh, of victims. But really, for video, all we have is you know, fingers clicking on a keyboard. That's not going to make an hour of television. You know, so we had to be creative. We had to be enterprising. We had to engage in impact journalism and infiltrate this world and actually you know, get into these uh, chat rooms in, in the different, different areas of the web that hadn't been you know, adequately explored before and, and infiltrate. Uh, ourselves and um, 
And we did it, and, and when we, we saw this play out live time, it became very clear to me that this could be replicated in virtually any other topic that, 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 uh, that we'd want to pursue. And you know, the whole advent of uh, Facebook and then Twitter and, and, and Reddit, it just became crystal clear to me that in terms of getting your content out there in a way that'll draw the viewer to broadcast television, as well as driving eyeballs in the digital world to your product, you know, are two very important things, but they're very challenging things. And you know much more about the technical aspects of doing that in terms of going to, into a company or an entity and, and, and helping them do that. Yeah, as, uh, uh, and so there, there's that wonderful mix of art and science associated with it. Uh, one of the things I was really curious to get your take on today uh, was uh, one of my favorite lines I heard, I don't know if he's still in the room, uh, was uh, the gentleman from Fox who was talking about uh, uh, just, uh, just uh, the media available for programming right now and that for some kinds of content, it's not a given that it even needs to be on TV. Now. Well, I think that's true. Uh, you know, at NBC there are entire um, uh, teams dedicated to getting stories out uh, uh, on, on our websites. And um, uh, we're doing that, we're gearing up right now. I'm starting a, a program with Discovery and a, another uh, syndicated program that's, that's going to start shooting soon and a, another project that I've been working with with uh, Dick Wolf. And all these things are going to have very significant internet components and, and internet interactions that will you know, drive people to, the, to the, the program, but also you know, to be able to do breakout programs. You know, if you're interested in this, we're gonna do something more specific on this aspect of the story, or you know, in the simple case of the, the predator, this is how you can protect your children. Uh, these are the links to find out if you have somebody like this you know, prowling around your neighborhood. You know, so it's, it's just, it's, it's almost like you're paying for, or you're, you're, you're offering a bonus uh, to what has been on the on the broadcast. Uh, would you still say though that for you and, and the work you've done and are doing now, that broadcast is still at the center of it? I think broadcast is at the center of it, and one of the challenges for us is is how do you make money from what we actually do on the internet? You know, we did a big story uh, about a year or so ago on, on uh, human drug trials in India, and we infiltrated. Uh, uh, some of the companies and showed how uh, you know a, a, a very dangerous drug could get uh, tested and potentially on the market, and it was interesting because in spite of the promotion, in spite of the the digital drive to, to bring eyeballs to the to the show, we still had some 245,000 people watch the entire hour of television on the website, and so what that tells me is. You know, it may not have been convenient for folks to watch at seven or eight o'clock on a Sunday night, but because we got the word out there that this was available, you know, 245,000 was a record for us, even though it's not the millions that you would expect to see a broadcast, it was a lot of people going to the website to watch the show. Mm -hmm. And you have to offer that because there, there is a growing segment of the population, uh, viewers, who will only watch your product that way. And so, so what's working especially well in terms of getting the word out? Is it just using broadcast to get the word back on, online? Or I, I, think it, I think it's trying to develop ways to, to get um, the word out on uh, uh, multiple platforms. You know, I mean, people are already you know, moving on from, from obviously Facebook, but Twitter, and, 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 and in my opinion, it's, it's the more of these things that you can get yourself out on. And, tell people something that they, they wouldn't normally get from the broadcast, or, or it's really about taking the viewer along on a journey of discovery and, and letting them know through these different uh, uh, digital platforms how it comes together, what we did. For instance, you know, if we were on a, uh, on a raid with the DEA exposing how Mexican drug cartels were using federal public land in Utah to grow marijuana. It's way easier than shipping it from, from Mexico. It's way less risky. Use our land, use our water, and they're doing it. But in the course of, in the course of, of, of exposing this and covering the story, which was very aggressive and physically uh, challenging to do, you can imagine we came across a lot of interesting things ranging from the rattlesnake that almost bit my producer to you know, just 
the, the volume of water and, and uh, sports drinks she had to, to, to consume to, to survive the day. And, and those stories that you don't have time to tell in the television broadcast are interesting to people and will drive eyeballs to the, to the broadcast. So, and then in terms of driving eyeballs, I've seen some of at least your colleagues and peers of sorts, like someone like Al Roker, right, who's sure. done a phenomenal job yeah, building wonderful. their personal brand, right, and their their direct audience, right, and and it's amazing. Someone like him, if if I was to think, you know, five ten years ago, like who'd be this person to watch as a social media stalwart? Like, it's it's not a given that someone like him would become such a celebrity right now. No, it's not. But that, I mean, that's that's how it works. <laughs> and and uh, you know, I was given the opportunity early on to to you know exploit this opportunity, and fortunately had a, a bunch of smart you know young people who were very good at it to sort of walk me through it and teach me to how to do it, so I could do it on my own. But literally. When we're airing a show, an investigation, we'll be on live, um, whether it's Twitter or, or anything else, and you know, talking about the show as it airs. And the challenge has quite honestly been to do that uh, to your East Coast viewers uh, without uh, giving away what happens at the end to the mountain time zone and the, the West Coast viewers. So you, know, you, you want to be realistic and have some fun with it and, and give some true insight to it, but you also don't want to have people think, oh, we already saw that, or we already heard about that. You know, but you can easily, I mean, I can pretty much predict, uh, based upon the story and based upon how, on how much I put into it digitally beforehand, whether or not something's going to trend on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I mean, th 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 there's basically a formula to it. Do we make money from that? No. Do we build the brand? Absolutely. And the more you build the brand, the more it's going to translate into making money at some point. And so what brands are you actively trying to build now? Well, right now it's, you know, it's, it's sort of, I guess you could say, the, the Hanson News brand through the show that we're going to start with Discovery, and, and that's uh, along with ITN, which is the British Television Network, the syndicated show, which is about to be finalized, and, and uh, uh, which is you know, going to be a five-day-a-week thing. And again, it, the more you can have that, that, that digital component, the more you reach people who may not be at home when that show airs for the first time. You know, and especially if it's a five day a week, 30 or 60 minute show, you, know, you have to get the word out there that this is going to be on TV. And you know, a lot of people aren't home at that hour. Right. So how do you reach those people? Well, you have to offer it in a digital format. Hey, yeah, and I mean, it's been fascinating to see like, like one of the first brands I worked on in social was, uh, was with NBC at a previous agency. And, uh, and I remember when we were going into them talking about promoting heroes. Right. right. And the idea that we'd have content that would be appearing over the summer. We don't do that, right? That's not in the window where we're promoting. We don't care about driving people to some TV premiere then. But, uh, but then as they start to realize, oh, wait, we build relationships every day of the year. And then that actually makes this renewal possible. A huge shift in, in it is in, in the thought. And, and what is your take on the approach to going out uh, and putting yourself out there in digital media? And how do you balance adding personal information with things about the actual product? How do you get out there and not be viewed as a poser? <laughs> yeah, well, it was funny. I mean, even yeah, for my own career, when uh, I was previously at 360i, and, and the, the woman who I was going to report to, their now, uh, now their CEO, Sarah Hofstadter, she asked me the toughest interview question I've, I've ever gotten. She said, you know, when you're out there doing all this and you're speaking and writing, are you promoting yourself or are you promoting the agency? And before I had to even attempt to come up with some bullshit answer, uh, <laughs> she said, it's OK, I've done that. I know you can't have one without the other. And so the more effective you are just having any channels uh, to just get the word out there, even MRY having a stronger digital presence winds up being more effective uh, for its brands, because then you know, we can tap into a lot of that directly and, uh, and generate some excitement beyond whatever the brand itself is doing. Beyond Twitter, beyond Reddit, 
what can we be doing to get the word out and drive eyeballs to our product? I, and it depends on the product and where the audience lives. But there, th I was just having a conversation in, uh, uh, outside with folks like uh, uh, John Hall and Nick Gross who are here uh, uh, about SlideShare, for instance, right? And it's uh, all of a sudden become far more of a a just consumer content destination. Actually, just every week, like today, when I see the top things trending on SlideShare, sometimes it just almost annoys me because it's someone like Guy Kawasaki, who I have a lot of respect for. Please don't tweet like Guy Kawasaki just annoys at D Berkowitz. Um, <laughs> but uh, just it, it's people like uh, Guy Kawasaki tweeting you know, the top 10 Mother's Day quotes or things like that. And it, it's stuff that works, like the fact that, that things like that can find success on what used to be a, a very B2B outlet, like SlideShare, means that, and you see LinkedIn in general becoming a media company, it, it's, it's the same kind of shift that's happened in reverse, where you had a lot of these consumer, uh, consumer platforms that businesses then found their voice on. Well, I think the, the other thing is the, the follow-up to the, to, the, to the program or to the investigation, you know, to have that live chat, I think, is, is valuable because people can actually, you know, ask their own questions and get the own, their own information and, and, and be very precise about but what they want to talk to you about. Yeah, so, well, and since you have such a good segue there, should we open it up to the floor? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, to anybody who has questions, for either David or myself, we'd love to talk about it. Can't, can't talk about anyone asking their own questions and uh, <laughs> leaving the folks here out, unless the chocolate bar really put everyone in a bit of a coma, because <laughs> that was some really damn good moves. <laughs> Somebody's got to have a question for us. <laughs> of course, with the lights, we probably can't see if they're <laughs> it, their hands anyway. It, exa and so, so with that kind of Q&A, though, are, are there things like, uh, I, have you done Google Hangouts or the yeah. formats that have worked yeah. for you? Yeah, and, 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 and I, th I think that's, uh, that's been very valuable. And, and again, it's, you, you, you know, you have to provide the opportunity for people to be interactive. And if you don't give that, put that time in, I mean, you're missing out on reaching, you know, a big part of our, uh, of the demographic we're trying to get to. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, uh, and so how do you then just, keep that going. Is it also just a lot of pieces for you to then drive awareness of the chat, to then drive awareness of the program? Yeah, I, th I think it, it's both. I, I mean, I think it's, it's also, you know, being smart along the way as you're creating, you know, the, the, the program or you're doing the investigation to, to capture those moments. Now, you may not want to be tweeting about it as you're doing it because you may let the cat out of the bag, but if, if you're capturing those interesting you know, sidebar moments that you can use, you know, in a timely way in the ramp up to a, to a broadcast. I think that's very valuable material, and I, and I think it's interesting to people. I mean, you know, some of the the tweets or some of the things that I get the most response to are about, uh, you know, Michigan State football or basketball, or you know, or, or just you know what what you've done that day. The one thing I did learn early on with Twitter is that you don't necessarily want to say, ah, oh, they have internet now on the uh, American Airlines flight into Los Angeles and I'm listening to the Allman Brothers because oftentimes that will result in uh, TMZ being waiting for you at the, uh, at the airport in LAX to get a shot of you getting off the plane. But, um, but that's, you know, that's all part of it. Right. Yeah, whatever it gets the word out about the brand, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. And, and I, think, I think more and more it's going to be about you know, finding creative ways to do that and making sure that, that we're at the, the forefront of the next technology. And uh, you know, when we started doing To Catch a Predator, it was uh, AOL chat rooms. You know, now, mm -hmm. you know, who goes there? You know, it's a whole different, uh, different landscape now. And so with your kids in that millennial sweet spot age, right, and just such a coveted audience to begin with, uh, are there uh, are there a lot of media properties things that you're just learning from them and you're trying to tap? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we, we were discussing, um, you know, as an aspect of what we're doing now is to do create content specifically for uh, you know digital platforms, the internet, and uh, we we're talking about okay, well, how do you how do you do that? Do you do a pay per view type model or do you advertisers? I was talking to my my son who is a sophomore in college and he said. Look, kids do not want to mess around with credit cards. They don't want to do PayPal. They want to see it instantly, and they want to see it for free. And, and it, you know, the light bulb went off at that time saying to me that, you know, you've got to do this, and you've got to depend on an advertising model. 
to make money on this because mm -hmm. the, he's right. Kids will not do that. And if, you're, if that's going to be a, a large part of your, your target audience, you have to do it in a way they'll watch it. You know, they'll, they'll click on it. it yeah, it's, uh, it, it's always great having some focus groups like that when, uh, uh, when I was talking to my 10 and 14 year old nieces in Toronto right. and, and telling them I had some Vine celebrities come over to my office. I, I, I will be the, their coolest uncle for a very long time. Yeah. And, so, and it's just something like that, that even these people, I couldn't care less myself about watching, but they've got their audience. Well, it's, it's, <laughs> it's the old story I tell all the time. I mean, you know, my both boys grew up with a father on television. It's not a big deal. But when South Park finally did a parody, you know, suddenly I had you know, street credibility. You know, and I remember the night that that, that was on. I was out on the West Coast uh, working on a story. And uh, one of my agents uh, texts me and says, you're on South Park right now. And I said, well, you know, I won't be able to see it for three hours. I said, how's it going? He said, that's pretty funny. And then about 25 minutes later, I said, it's taken a dark turn. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that clip, uh, that, 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 that segment has, has lived on, you know, from the two or three years ago it was originally broadcast. Um, you know, still on YouTube, still gets talked about, still on Hulu, still, you know, everywhere. And, um, you, know, it's, it's, you know, it sounds like a silly example, but it, again, that's part of the brand building. Uh, it's, it, it was just fun, like, before we uh, got together and, uh, and I was doing my own digging on you, and I just, like, you know, went and Google image search, right? And you're a meme. Yes, I am a meme, <laughs> yes, believe it or not. Well, apparently there was a cat who was imitating me on the internet the other day. I heard somebody send me a picture. A cat was sitting at a table in a kitchen with the arms crossed saying, you know, have a seat right over there. What were you thinking? You know, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's one thing to sit down with Chris Hansen, but to sit down with a meme? Like, yeah. like, that, that's like next to Holden Grumpy Cat at South by Southwest. This is amazing. Yeah. Well, are you sure nobody's got any questions for us? Oh, I see. Yes, ma'am. It's very competitive, and um, the, you know it's a twofold thing. One, our digital guys reach out, uh, and, and we had started a discussion, a dialogue with with Reddit, you know, weeks and weeks in advance, and kind of said, "Hey, look, you know, we've got this new franchise that we're doing called the Wild Wild Web, where we go undercover and infiltrate all the crazy stuff that goes on in Craigslist and Backpage." And they, you know, they thought it was interesting, and they thought because of the, the nature of the investigations and how so much of it involves you know, being on the internet, that it would be good. And, and we got a great response on it, and, and really, really good, tough, smart questions. Um, and, and, and even though you can choose not to answer them, I mean, the key is to, to take some of the tough ones. And for instance, there was one, we did an investigation on, uh, on daycare, and we found out uh, about all these daycare providers for, you know, for children who had criminal backgrounds and had been cited, yet they were still in business. And, and we had approached one of them. And we were having a pretty civil conversation, this fellow and myself. And, and, and I, I wasn't poking him with a sharp stick. I, I was just trying to you know, let it give him his, his, his uh, moment there. And the, the longer the interview went on, the more aggressive he got. And, and he was using the F word. And, this to Chris Hansen and Dateline, and, and it, there was a perception out there, as, as dramatic as television as it was, that, that I had sort of you know, brought him into that, when actually, in reality, I was trying to settle the situation down. And uh, a guy kind of ripped into me on uh, the AMA on Reddit, saying, you know, you provoked this guy to, for a television moment. I said, well, you know, it may have appeared that way, but it, in reality, we went back to him and said, look, you know, maybe you had a bad day. Would you like to sit down and discuss this in more detail in, you know, a, a, a hotel room with uh, proper uh, lit interview setting? And, and uh, he initially agreed and then stood us up and walked out. So, you know, by, by answering that honestly, even though it would have been an easy question to blow off, you know, you get some credibility out of that. And the, and the, the person who asked the question says, hey, you know, he didn't, he didn't chicken out on it. You know, it's, it's a, you know, it's worthwhile. And that, that's the kind of thing that that person will tell 10 other people who tell 10 other people who tell 10 other people, and it becomes exponential. Um, but yeah, it was, it was you, you know, they wouldn't do it certainly every week on Reddit, 
but uh, you know, we're probably good for you know if we had the proper content or, or content that they were interested in. Uh, you know, you'd probably get out there three or four times a year. And it was I thought it was it was great. It was it was very intense though. It was uh, but very good questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're going to have to wrap up. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Hansen and David Berkowitz. Absolutely fantastic. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much.